look what arrived. Not sure how it didn't cross our minds that this would be excruciatingly heavy and would require some sort of wheels to actually move it. The guy delivered it at like half six last night and just dumped it in our front garden on a pallet. So we had to, we used two skateboards in the end to shimmy it into here. When it is fully installed, it will be pushed further back, like right up against the wall. But for the time being, it's just resting there because it is going to have to be pulled back out again when we do the hearth. Um, still haven't found what we're looking for there. I have some stone samples coming from a place called Farmhouse Flagstones, which I'm feeling hopeful about. But we only really have two weeks to get this fully ready for installation. So I need a plan B and potentially a plan C, I reckon, if the flagstone samples don't work out. So I need to get hunting for some other tiles and stone options. But for the time being, it's very nice to just sit here and envision what it will be like um, at the end of November when it's all fully installed and functioning. I forgot to mention in, last, in the last video when I was talking about this space, with the new sofa, because it won't be as long and won't take up this entire back wall, there will be space either side of the sofa to have side tables and floor standing lamps. So much nicer to be able to sit and read here because at the moment there's no light really in this area and I don't like to have the big light on. So it's really just this light and that light that illuminates this area. Um, so I'm kind of just sat here with my book and a little light clipped onto my book. So it'd be much nicer to have some lovely ambient light in the corner. So you'll have ottoman, sofa, side tables, lamps. It'll all feel a lot nicer because these bits here, they've just been put there for the sake of putting bits there. You know, that chair, stool, Noguchi, that will all have a new home. I've just been um, having like a little bit of a winter wardrobe try on. <laughs> what was that little shimmy that I did there? Um, bringing some of my knitwear and coats down from the loft. And then I thought, actually, I'm going to stop and I'm going to film like a little wardrobe switchover segment for the vlog, actually. So that will be coming um, because I've got like a chunk of high summer stuff on my rail that just needs to be packed away. Otherwise, it's going to sit there for like the next six months just staring at me, taking up space. So um, I'm going to pack those in a suitcase, pop them in the loft, and then I can make way for coats, knitwear, even start bringing out hats and scarf, I reckon. Because it won't be long. It won't be long until we need those kinds of things. And I can just highlight, I guess, some of the things that I'm looking forward to wearing. I, l I love doing the kind of wardrobe switchover. Not that I'm doing like an entire wardrobe switchover, but a lot of my knitwear just gets like packed away for summer. Um, so every time I bring it out, um, when autumn hits, it gets me all excited again. So I'll film a little bit of that. Um, but these are just a few of the bits that I started to pull out. This is a Shane Emote knit um, from last year black cords from nothing written just a really plain old black look that I wore a lot last year but I think it's the textures that are really nice um, and still make it feel quite interesting a really nice one to just fall back on when I don't really know what to wear a little pop of gold and my brown the row loafers right apologies there is a lot of mess behind me but that is the reality when I start pulling my wardrobe out and <laughs> making a mess um, got some sofa samples. We, I've, I've mentioned this last week, I think we are looking to change the sofa and the decision of the fabric and the colour of the fabric feels tough. <laughs> Started off with very much like, right, just keep it neutral. Then I was like, do you know what? No, let's go colour. So started ordering some more colourful samples like explored blue, um, explored like a green, but this is way too similar to, it's almost identical to our rug, <laughs> um, which might, might look cool. Um, more of a sort of like golden mustard yellow. Um, also looked at a very, there's like a very like muted green here. Very pale. But now I'm like, actually maybe we stick to neutral and it's, it's artwork and things on the walls that bring more colour in. Because the fear is, is that I'll pick a colour, love it, then stop loving it. That is my fear with a coloured sofa. And I've, I've seen, like I recently saw a really nice blue one, 
that Colin King posted, stunning. But it's very much of a style that goes very well with the interior that it's all styled with. Always love a green sofa, but we have a green rug, which we have no intention of really changing. So I'm like, is that gonna be a bit too matchy-matchy? So now I'm thinking, is it just, is it just best to stick with a neutral colour and then dress it? I feel like that's maybe better because then the freedom to dress it in different ways is easier than having a coloured sofa. And then if I was to then be like, oh, I'm not sure if, oh my God, my heart. Genuinely just thought there was a bed bug on the window then. <laughs> but I think it's too big to be a bed bug. It's also on the outside. I think it's just a ladybird. <sighs> oh, oh, there's two of them. Okay, they're, def they're definitely ladybirds. <gasps> genuinely thought there was bed bugs on our window just then um so, sorry what was i saying sofa color yeah just babbling away but i need to make a decision soon because we really 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 would like the sofa to arrive before christmas these are all from sofa.com by the way we have had a sofa from sofa.com previously and it was the most comfortable sofa i've ever sat on it was just heavenly the reason it didn't come with us to this house is because it um, it didn't fit. It was all completely the wrong type of sofa um, and it, a friend took it off our hands and he's loving it, absolutely loving it. He's like, this is the most comfortable thing I've ever sat on. I was like, yeah, and I miss it because of our current sofa situation. <laughs> it's not comfortable. Um, so I'm, I feel very secure that the sofa that we pick is going to be so nice to sit on it's just the fabric and the color we are due um a storm this afternoon that is supposed to last according to the the weather people for two days two full days and nothing says storm ready like a wax jacket i really didn't want to leave the house today but i'm quite eager to take a couple of pairs of trousers to the tailor so i was like right wax jacket on umbrella just brave it um and hope that i don't get caught in it I'll show you the trousers that I'm taking to the tailor when I get there. Um, full rundown of the outfit that I'm wearing. Uh, wish, uh, sorry, complete mind blank just then. Um, AF Agar wax jacket. It is pretty much the same as a barber, but it's a bit more pared back. Barbers tend to have more bells and whistles. There's more hardware. The hardware is often gold. There's a lot more kind of like functional elements to a barber, whereas this is much more pared back. It has nickel hardware and very minimal hardware, um, which blends into the jacket. It also doesn't have, with uh, the wax barbers, they have like a flap on the back. This has zero flap. So um, yeah, much less detail. I would also say this is heavier than a barber because it has a very thick built-in lining, whereas with barbers you can remove linings and add in different linings. Um, so yeah, this has just got a, a, a slightly heavier weight to it and it feels a lot thicker than a barber. Underneath, I am wearing this. This is just one of those, you know, the wool, really fine wool um, turtlenecks from Marquette. They're really good as an underlayer because they're so thin. Alpaca knit from Arquette. Can you even see that through the smudge of my mirror? Arquette belt. Um, weekday voyage jeans these are so old and do you know what i went on weekday's website recently because i was like oh i wonder if the voyage is still hanging around N on the uk website no there's just every single pair of jeans on that website are all just like proper like slouchy jeans and i just feel like there's been a real sort of like on the high street a real sort of like demise of just like the normal straight leg jean because everything's so like loose and baggy at the moment and don't get me wrong I'm here for it like really comfy but I think there's still such a place for just the classic straight leg jean and the weekday voyage in my opinion is one of the best on the high street or well was one of the best on the high street because of the the amount of colours they used to do it in and the varying leg lengths because it is hard to find a 28 leg on the high street it's always 30 and 32 um so yeah for me personally this is one of the best jeans still um out there but maybe elsewhere in europe the voyage is still available 
it might still be it might be back on the uk website it just what they weren't there when i looked recently and i was quite shocked um but yeah they're just they're so good if you're kind of like between like five two and five five really a really good jean and then these boots are from the row from last year i cannot remember what they were called i want to say they were called the garden boot was it the garden boot or the grunge i think the grunge was the slightly looser kind of like slouchy version they're very good for rubbish weather because they have this kind of like rubber bit all around the bottom they're basically a traditional chelsea boot but with a kind of like chiseled toe and then that rubber bit and then my coolest Corley studio patchwork bag and an umbrella why did i leave the house today I am off to the hairdressers uh, in a few hours to get, um, to basically get some advice on how to fix a bad haircut that I had about four weeks ago. So I've had the same hairdresser, Katie, for about 14 years, I think. She's incredible. She's great at colour. She's great at cuts. She, she is, yeah, she's been the only person who's cut and coloured my hair for, for that long. I recently had my hair cut and blow dried by a completely different hairdresser in London as part of a job. And I was pretty unhappy with the results. And that's because the cut was like, it just wasn't the right type of cut for my hair. And I should have put my foot down when the cut started. But I was like, the hairdresser knows what they're doing. It's going to be fine. The hairdresser used this literally like a razoring technique from about here just grabbing sections of my hair and just like razoring it out and just like big clumps of my hair were just coming out and I was like trust the process trust the process it doesn't actually look too bad because actually it does this no this isn't good I've had to heat style it so much today to try and get it to look remotely wavy because now that I don't have the weight in the bottom of my hair, my hair dries completely different to how it dried previous, like prior to this cut. I'm gonna to go to my hairdresser today and be like, I'm so sorry, I went to a different hairdresser and it all went wrong. <laughs> and it's frustrating because obviously I had very long hair and I was very happy to cut it all off and I was very happy to have a bob again. And now I'm unhappy with the bob. And it's all because of this one cut that I had to have for a job. Um, so, silly me, really. Silly me. I have come here to talk about other things other than just moan about my hair. Just, I need to just stop touching it or just tie it back. That's why it's been tied back so much. Right, books. Books, books, books. Only two, but two books that I have loved and can give glowing 10 out of 10 reviews to. Reading for me this year has been quite up and down. I've not read as many books that I loved versus like 2022, where I feel like I, I felt like I read so many great books that year. This year's been a bit of a funny one. I've not quite felt like I'm on a reading high until now. These two books were just incredible. First was um, Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. This book is like so cozy. It's like a hug. I wanted to just savour every moment of it. It was just delicious. It is the story of a cafe that offers its customers the opportunity to travel back in time. However, there are rules to travelling back in time. The first is, is that there's only one seat in the cafe that allows you to do that. So that seat has to obviously be free for you in order for the customer to sit in it and travel back in time. The second rule is that when they travel back in time, they will still be in the cafe and they cannot leave that seat and they like they can't leave the cafe they just have to stay in the seat and then the third rule is is that they have to return to the present before the coffee gets cold so they don't have too long in the past so it's split into different accounts of different characters experience going back into the past but they are all connected like it's still um told in a way but they all kind of connect together 
Um, the reasons that people want to go back in time are quite sad, but it's... I'm going to give something away if I continue. It's hard because there's, there's a couple of other rules that I don't want to say because they kind of give things away. But it's more about the the person, what the person going back into the past gets versus the person that they're, they're, they're hoping to visit gets, if you know what I mean. There's, there's like often like a lesson or there's a real like takeaway from them going back to the past. That probably didn't make any sense, but it was such a lovely story and I have added the other two that come after this one to my two. And then Trespasses by Louise Kennedy. This was incredible. It is heartbreaking, but in my opinion, an incredible story. So it's set in the 70s in Ireland. I can't remember if it's like mid 70s or late 70s, but it's during the Troubles in Ireland. And it's the story of a Catholic teacher who falls in love with a Protestant barrister. He's married as well. And the story of their forbidden love and them having to hide their affair, basically. And I was so invested in every single character. Obviously, they're their story is very much the centre of the book, but then so much of what is happening in Ireland affects every single character in very heartbreaking ways throughout this story. And I just flew through it because I just wanted to know what happened. You know, I wanted to know how it ended. I wanted to know what happened to everyone because I was so invested in every person in this story. It deals with... Um, Lots of themes of violence, um, alcoholism. Um, it's it's a it's a harsh story, you know. It, it's 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 not easy. There were points where I did feel like quite, you know, it, tight in my chest. You know, bits really hit me. Um, but it was fantastic, incredible. Ten out of ten. So they're two books that have really made me feel like I'm on a reading high, and fingers crossed it continues. <laughs> It is, it's really short, isn't it? Oh, it's a lot shorter than I had envisioned my Bob being when I first started this Bob journey. But in order to kind of fix the errors of the previous haircut and get it kind of blunt again, uh, the hairdresser did have to take off quite a bit. Uh, but it is nice, I guess, to see what my hair looks like at chin length. Um, I definitely know I don't want to have a chin length Bob again. Um, but it's fine, in like a month's time it'll be back down to here. But if you are watching this thinking, oh, you looked so much nicer with longer hair, don't worry, I'm thinking the exact same thing. Uh, so please refrain from vocalising that to me because I have had a few people message me saying that. <laughs> Many of you will recognise this beautiful golden bag full of merit treats. I'm just going to change the exposure on that so you can see a bit better because it's getting a bit dark now. Um, yeah full of merit treats that I'm going to show you shortly. Just a few favourites that I have, a few new favourites, let's say. I've been using Merit since the brand launched in the UK. Big, big fan of the complexion stick and their blushes. They have sponsored this video and I can offer you some exclusive discounted bundles through the links in the description box. So I've put together a bundle of my favourites and a kind of glow set bundle as well. And through those links, you get an exclusive discount on the bundle. So that all that will be in the description box. Um, but yeah, I just, I've added some new merit bits to my routine. And they deserve, they deserve to be raved about. The first is the Great Skin Serum. This is a serum designed to hydrate and plump in prep for makeup. Designed to work with the complexion stick. It helps reduce redness and repair the skin barrier in the long term and just add a lovely glow, glass-like glow to the skin. Right, now we've got a bit of glow going on. The Minimalist now comes into play. This is a very, this is where Merit works for me because everything is very versatile. It's sheer but buildable. Easy, easy day looks, but the products are buildable in a way that then kind of like amps them up a bit for perhaps for an evening look. This is a very good example of how versatile their products are. It needs no introduction. If this product has, hasn't won awards yet, then I don't know why, because I, 
it's just so good which I use as a sort of complexion foundation hybrid thing I kind of just put it in areas that I either want to like slightly lighten or kind of even out this brush is also like some sort of it feels like a massage <laughs> Nice, 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 all blended in. Lovely stuff. Warm up the complexion a bit with the bronze balm. Another great thing about Merit is everything's designed to be non, ooh, that bit of hair's getting stuck. Non pore clogging. Congestion is something that I struggle with from time to time and do fear the clogging of pores. So it's nice to know that that won't happen with these products. And it does mean that they work across different skin types quite well. Solo Shadow. This is possibly my favourite Merit product at the moment. Powder to cream eyeshadow. Two favourites at the moment. We have Studio Vaketa. Studio is kind of taupey. Vaketa is Vaketa. Explains itself really, doesn't it? Studio has been my kind of everyday -er. Taking this, oh, this is a very nice brush, double-ended, dual purpose. I use the brush to really like work it in to the, um, the crease there. And because it's cream to powder, once it's set, it doesn't budge. But it doesn't like, not, it doesn't feel flaky, you know? It doesn't feel drying in any way. It just sets and stays where it's supposed to stay and then take the, the tiny end of this brush and just add a little bit along the lash line I mentioned Beverly Hills last week didn't I and a swatch as well and then Fox is another great one these are the um blush balms again another like versatile product that you can use on cheeks lips so this is Beverly Hills, very sort of like cool toned, rosy colour, and this is Fox, more of a brick red. Love using Fox in the evening um, with uh, on my lips and cheeks. Really nice for an evening look. But today, I'll do Beverly Hills. It's just like a really good, just a really good pink. And sometimes, that's just what you need. Just like a really good pink. Oh, mascara. So yeah, like I said, there are two exclusive discounted bundles in the description box. One that features all of my favourites that I've used, and then another one that's more of just like an essentials glow set. Nice one, Merit. Nice one. Oh dear, I am... Um... Truly a vision today. I'm actually worse than I was yesterday, but there's no food in the house, so I had to go over to the to the supermarket to get myself some supplies. Um, I was going to try and paint the bathroom this afternoon, but I am in no state to do that. I feel gross, so I think it's just more sitting on the sofa, watching films. I mean, there's never a good time to get ill. But it always seems to hit when I need to crack on with stuff. Um, like the bathroom, I just want to get it done, especially because we're going to, away to Wales next week. So I just really want to get stuff like that done, so that when we come back from Wales, um, it feels like loads of the, the annoying little jobs are kind of done, but oh well, such is life. Little, uh, I forgot that Thursdays was the day that they put all the new stuff out. And I'm a sucker for it. Like, I understand how it works. I get it. Like, they really are trying to suck you into the middle. And I am their target customer, and it works. Like, I just get drawn in, and I'm just like... Um, especially because, like, Christmas has fully arrived. So, so much of the middle now is just Christmas food. And I am just, like, there in, like, awe. Um, I would buy it all now, but I, do, I am, like, it's it's only the first week of November, like, save it, wait till December and then I can really sort of, like, embrace it. Otherwise, if I start buying it now, I might be bored of it all by December. Um, I did buy myself some chocolate, though, because I was like, that is self-care, isn't it? Buying chocolate, sitting on the sofa. Um, oh, man, it's just, like, all in my head, 
all in my nose, my throat feels like gravel, it's so painful. Well, 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 day three. I'm now from in the bed, from sofa to bed. Hopefully I'll turn a bit of a corner after lunch or something and can venture out. But I kind of don't want to because we've got stuff going on outside and inside the house today. Thank goodness Dean has got the day off because I do not have the energy to orchestrate anything. We've got a skip outside and um, Dean and his friend are like digging out, ready for a concrete pad that's going to be put down in the studio outside that's also happening today i think the concretes are coming today as well so it's skip and concrete then inside a plumber will be coming shortly to move a radiator um, and that can be quite a noisy and messy job sometimes so actually i kind of just want to stay in here and not see anyone um i'm going to try and do some reading today i've had excessive excessive screen time over the past couple of days because I've not been doing anything I've just been scrolling way more than I normally would and it's not really the best thing to do for my mental state I don't really get FOMO very often but I do when I'm when I'm not well you know unwell stuck to the sofa or the bed that's when I start to get FOMO so I'm going to try to do some reading today to just sort of like um just clear my head a little bit reading material that I have with me in the bed at the moment this morning it's been the little Christmas catalogue uh, a thrilling read highly recommend <laughs> and just started I have some questions for you by Rebecca Mackay um I saw gosh this must have been in the summer Lucy Williams posted about this book so it's been on my to be read list for a while and then I was in a second hand bookshop recently and saw this hardback copy and I was like do you know what I don't normally get a hardback but just because they're quite they're quite difficult to like travel around with if I'm in and out of London a couple of days a week this is not something I want to have in my handbag with me but I thought do you know what it's it is quite nice to read a hardback I have to say because they're quite like you know they hold themselves very well <laughs> so I'd like to get through quite a chunk of that today um aside from that i have no other drivelly ramblings for you um can i have a pastry yeah what was the one you wanted to look out for oh can i have the maple and pecan plat one please if they don't have that i'll just have pan of chocolate um no that's all thank you Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so just I would like to do a chunk of reading today. I have emerged. What a transformation from the bed. Um, I feel like the half up, half down do is my go-to at the moment whilst I kind of just wait for my hair to grow a bit because I just, even though it has been cut a lot more bluntly now, and it is drying with a nicer wave. It's still not quite, it still requires a lot to get it to, to, to go into that wave. So I'm just kind of chucking it up, half up, half down at the moment. Um, so yeah. Um, whoa, nearly fell off the bed there. <laughs> yeah, still not 100% as you can probably hear. And also just, I'm still a bit, you know, like when you are coming out the other end of it and you're a bit sort of like glassy eyed. <laughs> I'm like that at the moment. Um, but a full face of makeup has definitely made me feel a lot better um, about leaving the house. We're going to go to the reclamation yard. So we were just mid doing my belt then. Yeah, I'm going to head to the reclamation yard, get some tiles and um, crack on with the fireplace. Look how nice all of these chairs are. All they need is just like a, a bit of a clean and another paint. I really hate to make it such a central subject and to bang on about it, but the sooner my hair grows, the better. It's so short. I mean, like I said, we had to go this short, but it just, it doesn't look good being this short. I mean, admittedly I have air dried it 
this morning so it's quite big and fluffy and needs a bit of tweaking but no I really really don't like it anyway I'm just in our wardrobe room someone once said that this room looks like a Zara stock room and that could not be closer to the truth and I've worked in Zara so I know what those are, those stock rooms look like um so yeah we pretty much have our own at home Zara stock room but I have to say having everything out on display like this does make it so much easier to just see everything um even though it is a bit chaotic but wardrobe plans are just something that hasn't even crossed our minds yet that will be a long long way into the future um I've just started packing away like all of my really high summer stuff stuff that I basically know that I won't wear in the next five to six months and I've bought down a couple of big bags from the loft that got knitwear sort of like heavier weight trousers um these bags I have to say I mean they're massive so you can get so much stuff in them so I predominantly use them for knitwear because obviously knitwear is so bulky but I've had no issues with like damp, smell, moss, nothing like that whatsoever. Um, so I don't know if that's like a complete secret hack or maybe that's just like, you know, common knowledge that they, these bags are great for that. But you know, everyone's like, you've got to really protect your knitwear. And don't get me wrong, like I, I, I'm taking care of it, but these bags just live in the loft throughout the summer and then everything comes out in the start of winter and it's all fine. Anyway, I thought I could just show you some things that I, um, I'm very excited to bring back out again. I actually fear that my voice is going to go. Um, just rummaging through this bag now and kind of getting everything out. It's been quite a wake up call as to how much of a sort of problem I have with grey knitwear. Um, knitwear in general, I have quite a problem with because I just love knitwear, but grey in particular, I think I've got every style, shape, you know, like fabric needed that I don't need anymore. Like, I'm done. Um, so this has been a, quite a good opportunity to just take stock. Um, just going to grab at some of my favourite ones. This one is Anne Daughter, and actually a lot of the knitwear I had is Anne Daughter because the quality is just so great. This is a couple of years old, so I'm not sure if the style is still available, but I imagine because of the way Anne Daughter operates, the, st the styles just carry over season to season. So it's highly likely that it's still available or a variation of it. I love this knit so much because it's cropped so it means on me it hits me my belly button's there so let's say it's like right on the hip which is great if I'm wearing like anything that's like slightly wide leg maybe tapered you know like curved this kind of just balances that out quite nicely and I really appreciate a neck that can hold itself up I don't really like a slouchy turtle neck um so this is a really great one and I feel like I have almost like an identical version of it in cream. This one's not from Nothing Written, this one's from, um, sorry, this one's not from Anne Daughter, this one's from Nothing Written, but it is virtually a cream version um, of it. It's just like, it's just such a great shape um, on my frame and my height. Like, don't get me wrong, I love like big oversized knitwear, but it, it, it can drown me in like a way that isn't great. Um, Another, oh, this one's such a good one, but it, Ven store unfortunately is no more. Um, just beautiful, beautiful cashmere. This is two years old as well, I think, and I've not had to debobble this once. I'm probably gonna debobble it this winter, but that's its first debobble in two years. Like that's pretty impressive. You know, I've got other jumpers, other cashmere and wool jumpers that I need to debobble like every time I wear them. So um, I do miss Ven Store. The quality of their knitwear was always just so impeccable. Um, another cream knit. This this is another Andorta one. Like it's just, it, everything just feels lovely from Andorta. I mean, I could be here forever and showing you like just cream, grey and black knitwear. But, oh, okay, one more. This one's so good. This one's from Shane and Mo. You might know the black version that I wear loads of this. This is just like a sort of um, beigey kind of taupey version. Looks really nice with white jeans, actually, this one. Um, I pulled out some trousers as well. <laughs> I feel very smug that I've got three pairs of great cords all ready to go for this winter. And they were all, I think I got all of these last year, actually. Corduroy is having a moment, which is great because it means that if you're looking for corduroy, obviously the options out there are just like, you're inundated with different styles of corduroy trousers at the moment. Um, what I will say, if you are looking for corduroy trousers, try and look for something 
that is on the like thicker side, especially with trousers and like these more like wide leg and pleated shapes that we're seeing because with thicker corduroy, it really holds itself better. It just looks better. It feels better. I see too many like trousers made out of like quite thin corduroys and they don't, they don't hang as nicely. Um, so that would be my piece of advice. So just try and look for something like a, a really nice, like plush, thick corduroy. These brown ones are from um, a South Korean brand called Lex Finger Marche. I got these last year. They're such a great, they, they were such a great um, dupe <laughs> for the row ones that they also brought out last year. But I don't think, I don't think LFM have done corduroy again this year. Um, but there are loads of brown cords knocking about at the moment. These ones are a bit, they're, they're quite wide, but they're tapered. Um, these ones, you're not going to be able to see this, I don't think. They're like a, they're super, super, super dark green. Like you can barely notice, in, especially in this light, that they are green. These are MHL, which is Margaret Howell's kind of like slightly more casual, I guess, workwear line. The quality of these is incredible. Like they are so heavy and like, I just, they feel amazing. I cannot describe to you just how stunning the corduroy is in these. Um, and I think if you're looking for, like there's a lot of like wide leg options around at the moment. If you are happy to pay the price and you want something that's maybe a bit more tapered, check out MHL. I think they've done black ones and brown ones this season. Um, but just honestly, the way they feel is just something else. And then the final pair I have is black. I feel like the foundation of the corduroy trouser collection is the black one. Um, these ones are from Nothing Written and they still have them and they've done a newer style of the season. I don't know what the difference between the two are. I think the fit is slightly different. Um, they're just a great straight leg black cord trouser. Love these with um with a gold belt. I think the gold and the corduroy just like mm, yeah, love it. Um, if you want to shop nothing written, you can shop directly through their website, but it is a bit difficult. Um, but I know Essence have quite a big offering, and also W Concept, particularly if you're in the US, W Concept I think is quite a good one. Um, I'm trying to think where else has stocked nothing written. There's a few others I think which I can link in the description box. It's definitely not cold enough for this. This is like my prime joy. This actually never, this does not go up in the loft, that's for sure. This stays in a dust bag where, I, you know, where I can see it. Um, my Cauley Studio sheepskin coat, like I said, it's, it's really not cold enough for this and it probably won't get cold enough for it until about January. Um, just stunning, absolutely stunning, as is everything um, that they do. If you would like to treat yourself to the warmest jacket that you have ever had. I highly recommend Corley Studio. Um, and it looks like she's about to come out with some really, really beautiful new styles. I went uh, classic and black. Um, but I do love the patchwork one that she does. And um, just the brown version of this one is also great. What other things am I looking forward to? Um, I dug out my... Um, garden boots from the row, which I kind of did show you already. Um, they're a bit, they, they need cleaning because I wore them in the rain. They're like a Chelsea boot, but they're slightly, I guess slightly modernized a little bit with the uh, kind of like chiseled toe. Um, and then this kind of like rubber bit around the front. Um, they're, they're great. They were one of those styles that I feel like didn't quite go, you know, like you've got those styles from the row that go really viral and everyone's wearing them. Those ones didn't. And I don't think they really made them in high volumes because it's like once they sold out, they were kind of gone and I didn't really see much of them. Um, but they're such a great boot. And then the other boots that I've, I'm bringing out, I'm bringing them out. I haven't worn them for, I think I maybe wore them like once last winter, which is pretty bad of me. But it is the Calvin Klein boots. They're just, they're one of the things that I just will never ever part with because they're so rare 
to find nowadays. Um, and I just think they're, so, they're just a beautiful pair of boots. Like, they're just the perfect mix of like, they've got that kind of like Western, you know, but not to the point where they feel too like cowboyish. Um, what was I going to say about these? I've seen a brand do a really similar version of these recently and I can't think what the brand was. And it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a big, big brand like Kate or, you know, anything like that. I think it was like, that's going to really bug me, but I, I feel like I've seen a, a kind of like version of this boot around recently, which I'll try and find because I, I don't feel like I've seen huge amounts of kind of like similarly created boots since the inception of this boot. Um, they're just Jeff's kiss. So I plan to get a nice amount of wear out of those this winter. They look really good with like um, jeans that just hit the, the top of the boot. Like not, not, not like overly slouchy, just like just a tiny bit of slouch. Do you know what? I think I'm actually going to just leave it there, probably because I've spoken about clothes for too long and also I think I'm going to lose my voice in the next sort of five to ten minutes. Um, but whilst I was kind of unpacking everything I just was like, no, oh, I'm really looking forward to wearing all these things again and thought I would just show you a few of those things. Um, I now need to kind of like work out a system of storing the knitwear that makes it easy to actually get to. Um, yeah, I need to go. The amount of coughing that I'm going to have to cut out of this entire clip is ludicrous.